Hi everybody, uh, we're going to do something new today. So recently we did like a deep dive into a watch, a Moritz Grossman watch that was done for Revolution Watch Magazine. And uh, you know, it went really well. And I thought, well, this would be maybe the start of a fun new segment, right? Where we get an expert to come in and look at watches with us and point out interesting things on those watches. You know, kind of to teach watch appreciation. Um, it is a very opportune time because it just so happens that Sotheby's is having their Hong Kong watch auction next week. And so uh, I'm joined today by Sam Hines. Thank you, Harry Mark. Thank you for joining us. Well, who is head of watches for Sotheby's. And uh, he's brought some really wonderful pieces that are going under the hammer next week. Uh, and we're going to talk about just what's cool about them, what to appreciate about them. Um, so Sam, please take it away. Yes. Thank you for having me. Yes. So um, from the Pedder Street building here in Hong Kong, um, <laughs> in the wonderful armory, which Thank is you. a <laughs> place. Um, so I bought four highlights, um, not the, the highest value by any means, uh, but just sort of interesting, cool watches that um, I find um, uh, you know, wonderful for many, many different reasons. First of all, we, we bought the, the Audemars Piguet Starwheel Minute Repeater. It's called the John Schaefer. Um, so the, the star will, um, it, you know, it, uh, sorry, I'm doing it now, um, is a way to ex <laughs> okay. explain the, the, the way that the time is displayed on the dial. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, I, I bought um, an independent maker. This is Ludwig Bauard um, uh, from Switzerland. Um, he makes, I think, less than 100 watches a year. Um, and it's just a, a crazy way of, 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 you know, reading the time on the dial. Mm -hmm. um, thirdly, I bought a vintage Rolex. Um, this is a GMT from 1965 with a gilt dial. Mm -hmm. Just lovely condition mm -hmm. um, and really just a really honest, uh, great watch. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, I bought a vintage Patek. Um, this is a stainless steel watch from the mid 1960s uh, from the original owner in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, and just just really very, very classic and, and uh, elegant. And um, yeah, so I look forward to it's in wonderful condition too. Right. Actually, I'll tell you. Well, look, let's get these under magnification and we'll talk a little more. Yeah, sounds good. So, Sam, we have yes. lot 2203 mm -hmm. under the macro lens. Tell us a little more about it. So, the Audemars Piguet Starwheel uh, John Schaefer Minute Repeater. Uh, limited to 10 pieces. Uh, it's cased in platinum. Um, and the Starwheel complication was uh, first introduced um, and it was patented by Audemars Piguet in 1990. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was in the year 2000 they also introduced a, a line of Starwheels in millenary cases. Mm. Um, but it, it, it's so fun and it's, it's just a wonderful way of uh, you know, redefining the way that we read time on the dial. So we have these three sapphire discs. Uh, with four hours on each disc yeah. um, and as time goes by um, the hour is sort of indicated here uh, the minutes on this retrograde track here and as the sapphire disc reaches the end uh, 60 minutes then we see two o'clock here we'll, we'll sort of uh, rotate and follow the the hours um, and as the time is moving each disc will, will sort of, you know, will rotate in order to display the correct hour. Um, Why don't we pull the crown and we can see yeah. that go, actually. Pardon my hands. I have, I have a skin condition and people online always go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a tough life, I believe. Yes. Wow, that's amazing, though. Actually, you know what? I'm doing an absolutely terrible job. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Do you remember that Alan Partridge skit where the guy goes, the string back gives me a bit of extra purchase. <laughs> I, need a, I need a pair of, of spring, <laughs> string back gloves. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yes. <laughs> so, so I think people got an idea of how that thing right. works. The color in the dial is beautiful too. It's, a, it's kind of a deep navy, huh? Yes, deep navy bordering on purple. Um, and you don't see them very often, um, but I just think, you know, for 30,000 US dollars, um, you're getting you know, something extremely limited mm, yeah. and, and complicated at the same time. Yeah. Um, it's funny actually, because you know, you see other Star Wheels, like AP kind of really owned the Star Wheel yep. design for a while. Mm. But the the central ring here was never as as kind of clear and stark as it is on this one. Mm. It really adds to the design. I love that part of it. Yes. Uh, Should we give the minute repeater a little go as yes. well? Yes, do you want to try and sure. activate that as well? Alrighty, so there's the slide. 
And what is it? You should always pull the mineral pier slide to all the way end, to the end. Yeah. Or you screw the whole well, thing I've up. I've seen people do that. Oh no. Um, I also saw a collector once repeat, uh, you know, pull the slide, and then he said, oh, I need to put, uh, change the time so that it's 5 to 12, no. and he tried to change the time during the repeating, and oh um, my God. the watch was quite damaged, so uh, oh never. My God. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's a good auction yeah, story. Right. I'm glad that did not have my personal <laughs> possessions. That is a good auction story, though. <laughs> so what do you want to talk about on the, on the movement itself? So on the movement, we have, you know, we've got these, the, the two hammers mm -hmm. um, that are, are repeating by striking the gongs, mm -hmm. which is a, uh, you know, two pieces of, of metal that are very tightly, um, uh, you know, sort of in, enclosed uh, sort of around the movement here. Um, and it, it's not the loudest repeater by any means. Um, I think that's to do with the size, mm. you know, it's relatively small, um, but also the case is platinum, so mm. it's the densest metal. Yeah. Um, so therefore the, you know, the, the acoustics, it's, it's harder to mm. escape through the, the thick platinum case. In fact, you can kind of see the gong actually, right? Like if yeah. you turn at an angle, you can just about see it yes. in the edge. And, and that's how, you know, depending on how, um, you can really sort of change the sound of a repeater, you know, based on the gong, how mm. tight it is, right. um, how thick it is. Um, That's right. Um, so. I mean, people say that pink gold is the best for uh, minute repeaters oh, because yeah. the copper and the metal amplifies the sound more. Oh. Um, I think the best repeater I've ever uh, witnessed or heard is the 6002 Patek Philippe, the, okay. um, you know, the grand complication. Right. Um, the case is massive, right. um, but it's heavily engraved, so it's, the case is much thinner. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, it sounds like a, a clock when mm -hmm. it repeats, yeah. So. That's cool. Um, All right, last thing I want to show on this piece, actually, mm. is the brushed sides. Oh, I think the brushed yeah. sides are such an unusual... You don't see it often, you know? I can think of yeah. like Longa doing it on the mid case, but I've mm -hmm. never seen it go all the way down to lugs like this. Really different. I love that. Yeah. Okay, great. Shall we move on? Yes, definitely. Well, thanks for your wisdom on this one, Sam. No, let's keep going. Thanks, yeah. Next up, we have the Ludwig Balwar. Yes, so Ludwig Balwar, um, independent maker. Uh, not everybody's heard of him. Um, and he, you know, he um, first made his mark in watchmaking working for Frank Muller, and he designed the Crazy Hours, um, you know, where the, the hour. Um, uh, sort of independently jumps around the dial. So here we have um, so we have retrograde minutes, mm -hmm. um, and then we have this sort of um, jump hour time display, mm -hmm. and it's called the uh, half time. So basically, we have eleven o'clock, and you see that twelve o'clock is sort of distorted, mm -hmm. um, and as the hour um, advances, the, the plate here flips over, mm -hmm. and we, it displays the the correct time. Mm -hmm. So. Well, let's let's advance it a little bit because it. um, it's two concentric rings, huh? Yeah, two concentric rings moving in opposite directions. Go anti-clockwise. Go anti-clockwise. Uh, yeah. Oh wow! Cool, huh? Yeah, I love that. That's amazing. What is the gold? What is that number seven? Is it? Mm. Do you know how many were made of these? I don't know, um, but as a watchmaker, I think he's ah, making maybe less than 50 watches a year. Wow. Um, you know, he's most famous for the um, upside down mm. time, yeah. you know, where the, the hours are, are all upside down until they get, reach uh, 12 o'clock where they flip um, and yeah. uh, display the correct time. Um, but yeah, look at just, the back side? Yes, the movement is, is terrific. Um, it's very open, um, you know, and uh, very well finished. Mm -hmm. um, Amazing. And it's a platinum case. Yeah. Oh, and this is number one, huh? Uh, yes. And it's his own atelier, I assume? Uh, yes, yep. Based in Switzerland, in Geneva. Um, he was born in 1971. Um, okay, not that old either. Though. No. And you said he was working for Frank Muller um, and some other brands too, I think. Right. Um, there we go. Yeah, perfect. It happened. Yes. <laughs> you, saw <it. laughs> you saw it here first. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Cool. 
Let's move on to the next one. Yeah. Okay. And Sam, this is going to be like a fan favorite for a lot of people, huh? Yes. So the Gilt GMT uh, from 1965. Uh, the watch is from a collector here in Hong Kong. Um, he bought the watch in London in the early 90s from Burlington Arcade. I can't remember the name of the store, but it's a Rolex store where they have hundreds of Rolexes lined up. Ah, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they yeah. have the date the year in front of each watch. Yeah. And I asked him, I said, but why do you have, you know, every watch with 1951, 1952, 19, and they said to me, well, people buy for, um, as, as gifts for people's birthdays. So they just pick the year and then that's the watch they buy. Anyway. Makes sense. Uh, <laughs> Makes sense. So here, yeah, so the Gilt GMT, um, you know, first introduced in, in the early 60s, um, reference 1675. Um, the Gilt dial, I think was, you know, you can find gilt dial uh, GMTs from around 1960 up until 67, 68, I think, when they introduced the matte dial, which was a, a less expensive, uh, cheaper way to manufacture and, and, and make the dial. Mm. Um, you know, similar to the, you know, Patek Philippe using the hard enamel signatures. Mm -hmm. um, you know, late 60s uh, watch manufacturers um, became you know, more, more, of, more of a business and. Um, in any event, so here we have, um, so we have the gilt dial. Now, we know the watch is from after 1964, 65, because it's signed at the bottom here, Swiss uh, 25. Mm. Um, so that was, um, you know, a reading to say that the, the, the luminous material was not radium, but, um, but tritium. Um, and what's great about this dial is the loop, like collectors today, they pay a lot of attention to these, the, the numerals. So the loom plots, how perfectly are they formed? Have they aged consistently throughout? Um, and here you can see each each uh, loom or numeral is the same as each other. Mm -hmm. So it's all the same size and then they've aged this wonderful sort of ivory pumpkin color. Mm. Um, and I think, yeah, just it's, it's a terrific um, vintage watch. Um, um, and also we have, you know, a very nice case. So we can see the bevels on the sides here. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and then it's also um, known as, uh, you know, we've got the expandable oyster bracelet, which is quite cool. Um, the That's oyster cool. bracelet was patented by Rolex in the late 40s. Um, I'm not sure when they introduced the expandable bracelet, actually. Mm. Uh, but I guess it's, you know, to aid in humidity. You know I just or, noticed, I did... Because, you know, I, I am not an expert in vintage Rolex by any means. Mm. Um, but the second end is curved, huh? Like they curved down the tip. Uh, yes, yes, at the very end. Wow. Yeah. Because um, I always thought that was like for very high-end watches. I didn't realize even like Rolex sport watches had that feature mm. weapon. It's amazing. Yeah. I do love the color. The color of a gilt dial is really like quite special. Yes. And those plots just jump out of the dial so beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else to show on this piece? Yeah, I think oh, just said on the bracelet as well, right? Yeah, so you've got, um, so the bracelets are dated um, on the clasp. Is... So if you flip it over on the other side, ah, sorry, you've got a date just here. It's 65, is it? Oh, nice. Um, the clasp is in nice condition. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's just nice to find a vintage Rolex that's, that's all oh. original and um, this comes from a collector in Hong Kong. Nice. So, a little bit of a time capsule this one. Lovely. Yeah, a great, great example. Good stuff. Alrighty, cool. Thanks for showing us that. Yeah. Let's move on. Okay, and this is the last of what we're looking at today, and arguably my favorite. Me too. Mm -hmm. So, tell us more about this one. So, we have a stainless steel anti-magnetic Patek Philippe. Uh, this is a reference 3417. Um, was introduced in, the, in 1958 um, and was in production for about 10 years. Uh, the watch comes from the original owner in Japan. I believe it still has the original strap, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, the watch, you know, it, it's just very, very elegant. Um, we have a stainless steel case uh, that's very crisp, um, you know, with the original facets and lines, screw mm -hmm. down case back. Um, the movement is covered with a metal cap, um, you know, shielding the movement um, from, anti, you know, from magnetic fields that may interfere with the, the timekeeping or, or actually ruin or damage the movement. 
Um, so, you know, for many years, the, these watches didn't really uh, gain in popularity. Um, you could buy them for less than ten thousand um, dollars. U.S. of course. U.S. of course. <laughs> sorry. Um, the majority of them you see, the dial is signed anti-magnetic. Mm. This one, however, is not. Mm. Um, and just imagine this watch. You know, if you were to fit a steel gay fair bracelet from the same period, um, it would completely transform it. Um, and it's just a, you know, a very nice vintage watch. Yeah. The balance of it is lovely. Mm. You know, having the Rome, having the Roman num sorry, having the Arabic numeral yes. at twelve. Actually, what I really like is like the minute markers. Yes, they're sort of like known as the. Uh, Pearl, pearlage or pearl minute divisions. You find them on thirty-four forty-eights, mm -hmm. um, and it's just and I, and the signature. Um, you know, is that short signature? Yeah, um, I really <coughs> like the old style signature. Mm. Like it seems very minor, but I just like that short squat look a little bit better when mm. it comes to their logo. Yeah, good. The company, I guess they. Uh, changed their sort of company status in 1946. Um, oh. So it went from Protect Philippe & Co to just Protect Philippe. Oh, I see. That's how we know if a vintage watch, if the dial has been changed, if you have a watch from 1942 with a short signature. Mm, I see. Um, and the, it's rare to get the matching buckle too, right? Yes. Especially in steel. Mm. I love this old shape of buckle though. You know, just like a slight point to it. Yep. It's funny to see that it's even corroded. I know. <laughs> which is, I guess, a testament to how honest the condition is. Exactly. Man. And what's the estimate on this? This we have at 160,000 Hong Kong or 20,000 US dollars. But you think it'll blow past that? It should do, yeah. Wow. But just a, a really nice, honest and original uh, vintage Patek yeah. uh, from the mid-60s. Man, the time only's are great. In steel, yeah. Um, and time onlys, I think, have appreciated generally more than, than complicated watches. Yeah. Um, hmm. Oh, we should have put this in. Well, Sam, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your wisdom on these. It was really great to have a specialist, like, talk through these things. My pleasure. Because you know? there's tons yeah. of stuff that, like, even I would not notice. And I've been looking at watch for a while, but I don't mm. do this as a full-time thing. And you really, like, pointed out some wonderful things. So I really appreciate it. My pleasure. And yeah. you have to rush back to the auction preview. Yes. So we open today um, at the convention center uh, mm -hmm. on the fifth floor. Okay. Um, and we're open to the public until next Wednesday. Okay. Um, and then we have our auction on Friday um, at Pacific Place, which is our office on the fifth floor, starting at 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, please register. Please bid, uh, Mark. Please buy these four watches for your stock. Uh, uh, I'm so your I'm collection. so tempted by this AP. <laughs> or, the, like. or the AP, yes, go for the AP. Uh, um, but yeah, no, it's been a pleasure, and um, you know, I, I love your business and your setup. So oh, it's, uh, really thanks, cool. man. Well, thanks I hope we can do this again sometimes. This yeah, is great. Absolutely, appreciate it. Thank All you. right, good luck with the auction. Okay? Cheers. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for watching, guys. Yep.